France is to deploy armoured vehicles on its streets on Friday night as it faces the prospect of a fourth night of rioting. Riots that have seen 2,000 vehicles torched and 900 people arrested, all sparked by the fatal shooting of a 17-year-old black youth pulled over by police in a car in Nanterre. Faced with waves of protest, President Emmanuel Macron urged parents to keep their children at home. Un tiers des interpellés de la dernière nuit sont des jeunes, parfois des très jeunes. C'est la responsabilité des parents de les garder au domicile. Et donc il est important pour la quiétude de tous que la responsabilité parentale puisse pleinement s'exercer. Et j'en appelle au sens de la responsabilité des mères et des pères de famille. La République n'a pas vocation à se substituer à eux. Macron has lashed out against videos and calls for violence made by some young people on social networks. They think it's all a video game, he said, but it's French people who pay for it. Voyez, entre 200 et 300 000 euros par bus. Enfin, je, je précise que euh, nous avons déjà fait l'objet d'attaques à déjà trois bus euh, qui ont été brûlés dans la nuit de mercredi à, à jeudi, plus une rame entière de tram. Alors là, la facture est beaucoup plus élevée. It's estimated it will cost 8 million euros to repair public transport vehicles and networks alone. The riots have summoned the ghost of the banlieue riots that shocked the country in 2005. Comparisons are being drawn between what's happening now and what happened here in France almost 20 years ago when anger spilled into the streets across the country following the deaths of two teenagers who were electrocuted while hiding from police during a chase in a Paris suburb something that residents of these suburbs say is very telling of the kind of discrimination and abuse they often feel they suffer in the hands of French authorities. Will Emmanuel Macron be able to address those grievances, something that governments before his were unable or unwilling to do? Well, the task ahead for the French president is immense. Annelise Borges is in Paris for Euronews. One of the most divisive issues of the past few years is once again back on the EU's agenda. None other than migration. Poland and Hungary hijacked talks at a summit in Brussels on Thursday and Friday, leaving leaders without any final decision on the topic. They didn't even manage to come to an agreement on how to tackle the external dimension of migration, despite the fact that reaching agreements with non-EU countries is the approach that has more consensus among member states. La mejor manera de resolver el impacto de la migración irregular dentro de nuestras fronteras es reforzar la cooperación entre los países eh, de la Unión y los países de tránsito y los países de origen, pues es que me parece de puro sentido común. ¿no? Yo, a lo largo de estas cinco o seis horas que hemos tenido de debate sobre la migración, no me ha dejado de sorprender eh, eh, la ceguera de algunos en el sentido de no reconocer la necesidad de incorporar la dimensión exterior al pacto de migración y asilo. Budapest and Warsaw are unhappy with the asylum agreement reached between EU countries early in June, which means that member states must share the burden of migrants more fairly. The two voted against it, but it was approved by most EU countries. Now Poland has announced a national referendum on the issue, even if Brussels has already said that the asylum agreement must be respected. Polacy się mogli wypowiedzieć, czy chcą bezpiecznego kraju, czy chcą takich obrazków, jakie do nas docierają z niektórych miast, przedmieść zachodniej Europy. The second topic that dominated the summit agenda was Ukraine. EU leaders insist that support will continue whatever it takes, which means giving long-term financial support and to work on security guarantees for the embattled country. The European Commission has also promised to work on how to use frozen Russian assets for the reconstruction of Ukraine, an extremely tricky legal issue. Extremely low water levels at a reservoir in Spain have revealed the ruins of an ancient village. La Isabella was submerged when the Buendia Dam in Castilla-La Mancha was created in 1952. A sustained drought in Spain has reduced the level of the water in the reservoir to 22% of its normal height. Overall, the region's reservoirs are down nearly 40%. Recent heavy rains have not been enough to replenish the country's water reserves.